There are many Glocks, but this one is mine, and it's my favorite. Stay tuned to find out why. Hey everybody, Hilton from 10.8 Performance, here in the 10.8 Performance Lab with my favorite Glock from my pile. My favorite Glock 19 from a pile of Glock 19s. So it's kind of a Glock world out there. If you go to a training class, whether it's a law enforcement class or open enrollment, wherever you go, there's a overwhelming majority of Glocks. This has been the case for quite some time, and I've kind of developed some favorite mods and features that I like on all my guns, and they all kind of settled into this one. So I want to crack into all of those for you and uh, get into the details. Glock 19 is a great do-all size style pistol. You can use it for concealed carry, off-duty carry, plainclothes carry, exposed holster duty carry, tactical carry, uh, all kinds of stuff, you name it. This Glock 19 we're gonna talk about today has been uh, one of my main guns for training, and I've taught a lot of classes with this one and done the train-ups for those classes with it. This pistol, the bottom half is an early production Glock 19 Gen 4. Uh, molded from the factory in OD Green. The top half is a Gen 4 MOS slide that, uh, let's let's dig into this one. Uh, it has been worked over by AMF Defense, and they are currently my favorite shop for uh, doing uh, aftermarket machine work. Uh, the slide as it was had basically the MOS cut on it and the, the really slippery, shallow, uh, round, rear serrations on there and that just really wasn't working for me. Uh, I want more traction on any of the slides that I have and the factory Glock ones really just really aren't up to the task especially if you're either uh, sweaty or uh, you, you've got uh, perhaps uh, hand injuries and uh, crush strength issues or whatever. Uh, so had, the, had Chris over at AMF Defense do uh, front serrations which this gun didn't have uh, and then uh, enhance the back serrations bevel the slide because it looks cool and then uh, also serrations on the top so what this does uh, i like to manipulate optic guns from the front uh, because the optics otherwise in the way and uh, with the top serrations lets me roll my thumb over to do press checks and just a lot of positive traction on the gun i'm not into cutting ports and holes into the slides for no reason at all uh, lightens them, changes their timing, and also I don't like having holes in it to let dirt in. The slide is also finished in uh, a dark gray PVD, physical vapor deposition finish, uh, which is uh, kind of the same deal as Ion Bond, which is a brand name for the same process, and Armor Lube, uh, both uh, I really like Armor Lube for black finish, but um, uh, it's that's that's the finish that's on there moving back on the slide we've got a trigicon rmr rm06 i just happened to be on there for a bunch of different contract classes i was teaching so this gun has always had an rmr uh, and no other type of optic the rmr is on manual adjust for its brightness setting and it is mounted with uh, torx head screws I do not ever use hex head screws anymore because they're so tiny and it's real easy to strip them out, especially since the RMR has to come off about every year for battery change, which is a drag, but with Torx head screws, it's a lot easier and more efficient. Uh, it is mounted to a CNH Precision Weapon Systems V4 plate, which is my preference. Uh, I like the plate. I like the design of it with the uh, threaded posts, which double as recoil lug posts and also improve the overall amount of thread engagement uh, drastically over the factory MOS plate. Don't use the factory MOS plate, they're not very good. Everything is witness marked including the uh, elevation and windage screws. I use a sharpie paint marker, a fine tip one, or you could use a toothpick. Uh, that works as well. Got 10 performance Optic height front and rear sights, uh, the 395 tall rear, it's the only optic height sight that I make. It works with the MOS mounted optics uh, with a 315 front, works for like 99.99% of guns, that height combo. I use a green fiber optic in the front, red electronic dot. My eye looks for the red dot and ignores anything else as noise. But in the case of a compromised optic, when I look through all these 
doohickeys and, and uh, potentially compromised optic and all the different black objects, having a green dot in the front really helps uh, draw the eye to that site so I can actually do any kind of work with it. Uh, I used to use, I do make also a plain black front, but the issue that I had when looking through uh, that field of different black objects in the, the, the sighting plane is that it got lost in the field of view and I couldn't find it fast enough to do any work in case I needed the backup irons. So your call on that one, that's a uh, strictly a taste thing, it's ne neither here nor there. Uh, the rear notch is 140, again strictly taste. My 10.8 sights are a lower one-third co-witness with uh, all of the RMR footprint derived sights like the RMR. Uh, the SRO. SRO sits a little taller, so they do sit lower, uh, probably like a lower one quarter even, uh, but you can still use them. Also works with the Holosuns, the 507C, 508T, the enclosed emitter 509T, and also uh, with the Aimpoint Acro P1 and P2. So uh, the sights work lower one third or lower uh, with all those sights. And uh, the sights are finished in a melanite finish, which is similar to how the original Glock factory uh, slides are finished. And it's a very hard surface and extremely co corrosion resistant. So uh, that's the top end of the gun. I have a KKM drop-in stainless match barrel. And of all the different barrels I've tried, KKMs have consistently been the best shooting across a number of different guns from arrest using cheap blazer range ammo. I've consistently gotten under one and a half inches uh, group from arrest uh, with any of the guns using the KKM barrel. Gen 4 guns, uh, pretty much all my Gen 4 guns get a match barrel because you figure uh, with a uh, Gen 4 gun, uh, you're usually getting, uh, on average, three to five inches is the, the general range of accuracy. Each gun's going to vary so much. Uh, I've seen some Gen 4 guns that shoot awesome, but most of them run in that three to five inch range. Uh, and then a Gen 5 gun with their new marksman barrel, those shoot quite well. Uh, somewhere in the two to three inch range is kind of, you know, a, a ballpark that you could expect out of it. But uh, man, these KKM barrels really, really shoot. So I put one of these in all of my Gen 4 guns. Hey, you want to save on cool tactical stuff? Who doesn't? You could save on LAS concealment holsters. You could save on next level training cert dry fire pistol. Or you could buy stuff like this uh, tactical light from Big Tech's Ordnance, pants from Vertex, also backpacks, good stuff. And my favorite energy drink, Jocko Fuel Discipline Go, and also their protein powder, chocolate malk is my favorite. Check the links in the description below for the coupon codes and save. Speaking of Gen 4 versus Gen 5, uh, I've been asked a lot of times, hey, do you prefer Gen 4 over Gen 5? Uh, no, actually, I recommend Gen 5 over Gen 4 to most folks uh, because of the improvements in the geometry of the trigger mechanism, which improves the factory unmodified trigger dramatically, dramatically, uh, and also the improvements in accuracy with the new barrel and the lack of finger grooves. I don't really love the finger grooves because... Really, who likes the finger grooves on these things? They, they end up forcing my hand into a spot where I do get a hot spot from the bottom of the trigger guard. So um, I do prefer the Gen 5s. Speaking of the frame, a little back to the frame here, um, I don't usually do texturing on the frames because I want all of my guns to be uh, the same. And rather than texture every incoming gun that I get, I've got quite a few of these for different projects. I just leave them that way. And also if I go to a law enforcement agency, my gun is uh, at arm's length, pretty unremarkable looking. Going on to the other side of the gun, the extractor is the stock one in this particular gun. A lot of the early Gen 4s really didn't extract and eject that well. Uh, if you need to fix a gun gen 3 4 or 5 the apex tactical extractor kit is hands down the best and if you're doing a scratch build on a gun uh, like you're building up a custom slide or whatever uh, that's the way to go the trigger is a uh, tier trigger tyr the norse god of war uh, from currently from glockmeister designed by damon young of ssvi uh, a friend of mine and it is uh, an aluminum trigger that's got a more flat 
profile in both uh, side profile and cross section uh, with slightly rounded edges. And with pretty much all the aftermarket aluminum triggers, you're really looking for a, a feel under your finger that is favorable to you. You just like, it's your taste. Uh, most of the designs that I've seen uh, offer the same safety features as a regular Glock trigger with a little tab and all that, and uh, they don't convey any other magical properties, uh, and neither does this one. So it, it does all the same things a regular Glock trigger does, except it feels, uh, feels really nice under my finger. I've got a Gen 3 trigger bar in here because if you recall, the Gen 4 has got that little dimple on the upward extension of the trigger bar, which adds drag and makes for a really grindy, crunchy trigger. Uh, moving a little farther back into the gun, I have a 10 8 connector in there, which uh, drops the trigger pull weight uh, up to a pound, depending what you started with, of course, uh, what type of connector. But uh, from the dot connector and the Gen 4 trigger bar, changing out the Gen 3 trigger bar and my connector. Uh, I've got, uh, and some judicious polishing and cleaning up of the machining marks and so forth. Uh, got a trigger that is consistently down in the uh, actual five pound range, not the imagined one that's on the Glock sticker uh, from the factory. And it has a nice predictable wall, nice stack up to a wall and a clean break at the end. So uh, a trigger that is suitable for duty and carry use with minimal modifications, no spring changes at all. Uh, I do not recommend, nor do I change springs on the guns. I don't change any of the springs, use all the factory rated ones because you're not gonna outsmart the engineers at the factory. And, and frankly, the, the spring ratings on everything are just uh, super, super reliable. So I leave them the way they are. Some of the other controls, I use the Glock factory extended slide stop. Uh, I was issued Glocks with that particular feature and I grew accustomed to it so I stick them on all my guns now because uh, I use my thumb to drop the slide. Uh, the magazine catch is also something I got used to on my work guns and it is a Glock factory part and it is the 8794 is the part number. Uh, it is sometimes billed on the Glock reseller sites as a extended mag catch. It is depending on which units I measure extended as little as 20 thousandths of an inch, which you're not going to tell. I don't know why they named it that. The reason I use it is because it has a uh, radius front on it and gets rid of the sharp corners that are usually on the stock gen force. I didn't even realize that we had a different mag catch on my work guns until I compared with a then new Gen 4 out of the box and realized they had different mag catches. So I uh, change them out on all my guns. It's subtle. A uh, very cheap uh, mod, but uh, adds a little bit to the comfort and it's just a factory part. Working our way down the frame, I have an Overwatch Precision Magwell. Uh, I like the interior profile of these. The, I don't find that the Magwell adds really much to the footprint, but with the magazine seated in there, the Overwatch still allows access to the front of the mag and paired with my magazine base pad, which has a flared and serrated front, you're able to tear the magazine out via the serrations. You can also access it from the side using the scoops and flared side that are on my base pad. And of course got the uh, little dimples on the bottom for marking your magazines. And they come in groovy colors uh, to sort of match whatever iterations of color the Glock frames have, including this OD one, as well as some brown color that is interpreted either as Dark Earth or Coyote, depending which run of Glock. And then uh, of course, uh, Tactical Black. Uh, my magazine base pads are compatible, of course, with this Overwatch Precision. Also works with uh, SLR Rifle Works mag wells, which are real nice, and uh, the Magpul molded mag well. I have not tried every other magazine well in existence, but if I were to recommend one, those are the three that I'd recommend. But my edge is to the Overwatch Precisions, definitely my favorite. For a spare magazine, the reload that I carry in the hip pocket of my Vertex pants, uh, I usually use one of these, which is uh, started life as one of the peanut butter. Glock 19X magazines with the factory plus two extension, but you'll notice I've added my 10.8 extension on there because I, I like the size of this magazine. It, it's practically perfect uh, in my mind, a 19 round magazine that's still compact enough to manipulate easily for reloads and so forth and not too ridiculous to carry, but you got 19 rounds on there. And uh, 
all it is is uh, my base pad replaces the little smooth boot that comes from the factory, uses the factory spring and the factory retainer cup in there, and pow, you go from being almost cool to so cool. Got it in actual color match to the 19X magazines, and then of course in tactical black. For the light, I have a Streamlight TLR7A. A model, not the regular TLR7. This has a different switch, which is vastly superior to the original TLR7. It comes with the two different tail caps that you can find a switch configuration and height that works for your hands. And it's got a million different uh, little uh, locking bar pieces that you can put on to match your particular gun. Uh, we've got momentary and uh, constant on. 500 lumens, single 123 uh, lithium battery, uh, really great light. I was initially extremely skeptical. Oh, and it's got a lockout bezel too. Um, I was extremely skeptical, but after using it, uh, I am completely sold because it, check it out, it comes flush to the muzzle. It's lightweight, compact, it doesn't really grow the gun that much, and it makes it extremely efficient. Uh, it lets you basically run this one gun for everything from concealed carry to tactical. You got it all covered. As far as holsters, uh, the one that I usually use is this SIA 2.0 from LAS Concealment. Got mine in cool multicam, and it fits this. There you go. So that's one I usually carry, and I carry the spare magazine uh, in the hip pocket, the magazine pocket of my Vertex pants. Uh, so it doesn't add uh, much to the loadout, a uh, very lean setup. And I've got uh, 15 plus one here, and then 19 rounds for how many does that come out to? It's like 150 rounds on board. Anyway, uh, pretty simple setup. Uh, I like it, lean, simple and uh, I can actually reload okay enough uh, out of my uh, pants pocket with this magazine. If I am doing some work where I expect to need to reload repeatedly uh, or just want the onboard magazine a little bit more accessible, uh, I will use this, which is a Ronin L for light bearing 3.0, also from LAS Concealment, recurring theme. Uh, you got the pistol on board, and then I have the magazine pouch option for the longest magazine that the option permits. So once you've got the magazine on board, it uh, doesn't protrude above the level of the pistol. So you get uh, flush fit uh, such that like if you need to, to crouch or bend or whatever, you have a, a, an even surface to work against versus say having a magazine pouch where you've got the magazine sticking up real high and it actually becomes an issue to uh, your mobility. So uh, that's the setup that I run uh, if I'm using an onboard magazine in a sidecar type situation. There you have it. My Glock 19 Gen 4 OD, sort of a Franken gun, refined, tweaked to my taste and needs, uh, but still relatively conservative. Not 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 super crazy as far as its uh, overall look and and whatnot. Uh, very reliable, high performing gun. Like it a lot. And uh, if you think I missed any kind of mods or or discussion about this thing. Uh, hit me in the comments below and let me know what other stuff you might want me to cover or talk about in any future video. It could be about Glock stuff or whatever else, but let me know in the comments below. All right, we're here at the end of the video. Thanks for watching all the way through. Like and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe so that you can get notifications of upcoming videos brand new stuff coming out as fast as I can crank it out. As always, please support the channel and the company with uh, a visit to the website. You can get uh, those cool Glock base pads to make your magazines even cooler, bunch of different colors. You could uh, get sights for your gun. Until next time, I'm Hilton of 10A Performance, and remember, only performance counts.